Hello and welcome to another budget and Lego video. Now we've got a 2011 Peugeot 3008 behind us. Yes, it's the one that I've done a few videos on, the one that people don't actually watch properly and love to comment. Anyway, we have, and we're on our new place by the way, uh, we have uh, a problem. So this car basically went into limp mode, it shut off, um, the stop sign was coming, no power, you know, the usual kind of limp home mode stuff. And we're going to plug the computer in to see what we've got sorted. A P0268, which is an injector number three, short between two wires. Now that's what the actual computer says. We've got a few ways of testing it. Because they're kind of buried right in the back, we can actually test them on the car doing some very simple methods. The first thing we're going to do is bi-directionally control it to test the actual wire, to make sure the wire is, you know, the actual, the, the, the control part of the wire is good. Because we could have an injector issue, we could have a wiring issue, could have an ECU issue. So by testing the, the wires, we'll know if our ECU is okay and we'll know if our wire integrity are okay and we can do that very simple sorted actually the first thing we're going to do is we're going to activate injector number three to see if we can hear it clicking oh that's injector number four that's no good go back injector number three right we hear it clicking so but like i said we have to be careful because we can have an intermittent issue here which is what we do so what i want to do now is just test the wire integrity even though to be fair that test can kind of you know tell us that our ecu and our wire integrity are okay because we're using the injector as a load but i just want to use my own load on it just to be 100 percent sure all right so what i'm going to do is we're going to see the test light flashing injector number three and there we go so very very quickly that tells me that our wire integrity and our ecu is okay so we're looking at injector issue now right we're going to do a few different tests now there is other tests we can do if we take the injector out like a pin to a body test and stuff like that um and obviously put them on a special bench machine but i just want to show you a couple of things you can do when the injector is inside the vehicle and it gives you a good indication of basically what's what's happened we're going to do a microfarad test with this multimeter and we're going to do a resistance and check and an insulation test with this one and it will just give us a really good indication of what's kind of going on now um this is going to test the solenoid part of stuff but as the actual injector itself then this isn't going to really do it there is other tests out there but it'll give you a good indication and the only real proper way to test any diesel injector you know properly is to take them out and get them put on a, on a proper flow bench but this will still give me a really good indication of where to go you know to take out injector number three you know to replace them all or whatever the case may be it just gives us a really good indication of where to go first sorted so what i've done is i've made my own uh lead here which i can just put to any uh, banana plugs which is really handy so i'm going to just snip this on first and we'll do a microfarad test right so i've set it up and on these injectors you are looking at about 3.4 to 5 microfarads in and around there now each injection is kind of slightly different so you need to know and as you can see yeah that's within spec um you know it's not that far Oh, so it's kind of passed that test and what this is also going to show you is just because it passes you know three or four different tests it only has to fail one and like i said this is really going to show us um the kind of the beans of it because i've seen these injectors pass an oscilloscope waveform you know they look perfect but it's an intermittent fault and this will kind of find them where the oscilloscope you have to obviously put it on at exactly the right time it tends to fail which you know could be quite difficult so we passed that test uh we've passed the wiring test and the ecu test so let's do the um ohms test and let's do the resistance or the uh, insulation test sorry thinking about it the microfarad test it, it's it's on the limit of kind of failing um it is close to kind of the limit but what we're going to do now is we're going to do an uh, we're going to do an ohms test and we want to see on this particular one around about 200 kilo ohms now, as you can see our leads are touched together we're zero zero completely ohmed out so now what we're going to do is we're going to put it in and we're going to see what we get now with this test also you can do a pin to a body but i can't do this because the injector is in 197 kilo ohms where you know we are within the ballpark that's absolutely fine um if the injector was out you would do a pin both pins to a body but like i said we're doing we're doing ones where the injector isn't out so we'll clip our wire 
back on and we're wanting to see around about 105 volts or over 100 volts for a good for a good um, injector solenoid and we'll press the button 45 volts 46 yeah so that is that's no good the the solenoid part of that uh, is gone and as you can see it's actually it's going down now but as you can see that's still fired and this is why I'm saying an intermittent issue that injector still fired but it failed the test so there we go boom we need another injector now when you're here it's always good just to test the others because you know one injector fails you there's a chance that another one's on its way out or anything like that um they are expensive so it's up to you what you want to do i mean you know by rights the best thing to do is get all four reconditioned but that's not always on the table because of price you know second hand ones yeah they're available but they're second hand you know um and if you just kind of if you're going to go down the new route which I never really would anyway, uh, always getting reconditioned, but if you just get one reconditioned, it's kind of, well, the other three are old and most of them on the way out, then you can have an imbalance problem, and especially on the new cars, the injectors try to balance themselves out, so you do have to be kind of careful. The kind of the proper procedure in this situation is for new or reconditioned injectors, but again, it all depends on price. So there we go, nice, quick and easy. Um, injector number three, gone, sorted. Right, like I said, there's loads of different ways of testing injectors, but this gives me the confidence now to ring the customer, tell him what I found, and I will be, well, depending on what the customer says, I will be, if he says, you know, get them all tested, I will be taking them all out and then get them tested on a bench anyway, because that's the really the only way of doing it. You know, you've got spray pattern, you've got so many things internally in these injectors, and especially the newer ones are even more complicated, that, um, you know, you can't really you know you need to be 100 percent certain i am certain enough now that i know number injector three is bad good enough to take off and be tested and uh so we're going to see what the customer wants i don't think i'm going to be able to actually re record the repair because i just don't have the time i'm still moving like i said but at least this gives you a really good idea of how to actually test the injectors to get them sent off you know to do whatever you want to do if you've got these machines and you really want to go down the second hand route you can go into a scrap yard you can actually do a lot of these tests yourself with the machines on the injectors they hand out to you you're not going to be able to test spray patterns or anything like that but at least you're going to know the solenoid and you can't just take the solenoid off and swap it with another solenoid because they have to actually be uh, gapped there is a special washer behind the solenoid that sits onto the injector so don't just think you can oh i'll just swap solenoids around because i've got one good solenoid your spray pattern your flow rate and everything will be affected so that has to be done on a bench properly the whole injector you can swap yes but don't just swap the uh, solenoid part out because you will come unstuck very very quickly so look hope it helps please like share comment and subscribe don't forget links up here links down below but most importantly don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one sorted